sequences are functions with a domain of the natural numbers. So that means that we can actually use some things from limits. Okay, the limit of a sequence defined by a function. If we can find a function that has the same values as our sequence, then we can just use our limit properties. So I'm going to, for each of these, consider whether it diverges or converges. And I'm going to redefine this. The limit as x goes to infinity of 5 minus 3 over x squared. If we have this function, then this second term will go to 0, and the limit is 5 which means that a n converges to 5. So I can take that function idea and then use something there and then backtrack to a limit. Okay, next, limit as x goes to infinity of 3x to the fourth minus 7x squared plus 5 over 6 minus 4x to the fourth. Okay, now we can use L'Hopital's rule actually because this is continuous and these are both going to infinity. One's going to negative, one's going to positive infinity. Or we can use an idea we've used from calculus one that these terms are negligible. These terms don't change much. Oh, actually wrong one. These terms don't affect anything. So in the long run, all that we really care about is 3x to the fourth over negative 4x to the fourth, which is negative 3 fourths. So a n approaches negative 3 fourths in this case. Part C. All right, the limit as x goes to infinity of 2 to the x over n squared. Okay, both of these are going to infinity, so we are going to have to apply L'Hopital's rule here. This is an indeterminate form. As x goes to infinity, that is going to be the natural log of 2 times 2 to the x over 2n. Still both going to infinity. I changed to x's in one and n's in the other. Okay, so let's fix that real quick. Now, you can apply these properties with n's in there, okay, because they are a function defined in terms of n. Okay, now that does not help. So let's apply L'Hopital's rule again. X goes to infinity. This is the natural log of 4 times 2 to the x over 2, which then goes to infinity, which means we can write a n diverges, it goes towards infinity, and the sequence is divergent, or just simply, the sequence diverges. For part D, we notice that this is actually of the form 0 to the infinity. As the inside portion is going to 1, Okay, we have to the infinity. So we are going to have to modify this just a little bit. Let's first take the natural log. So we're still taking the limit of 1 plus 4 over n to the n. By taking the natural log, because the natural log is continuous, we can interchange these. So this is the limit as n goes to infinity, of the natural log of 1 plus 4 over n. And actually, let's go ahead and change these to x. That way we can apply some of our familiar tactics to it, which treat this as if it's a function without that restricted domain of the natural numbers. So 4 over x to the x. x is going to infinity. x goes to infinity or x to the x. Now, a logarithmic property here will bring our x down. Now, what you're going to do is, this is still written in, in terms of infinity times one, okay, or infinity times zero because of the natural log there. So we are going to rewrite this. x goes to infinity. Okay, let's rewrite this as this quotient, natural log of 1 plus 4 over x 
over 1 over x. Now we are in the form 0 over 0, an indeterminate form, so we can apply L'Hopital's rule. Take the derivative of the denominator and the numerator. Taking the derivative of the numerator okay, is going to be negative 4 over x squared divided by 1 plus 4 over x because that is the derivative of the logarithm, the natural logarithm. All right. So once we put that there, we have a complex fraction. So divided by the derivative of 1 over x, which is negative 1 over x squared. Now rearranging that, this is the limit of 4 over 1 plus 4 over x. And the limit of that is 4. Now we can observe at this point that this says the natural log of our sequence is converging to 4. Again, the natural log is a continuous function, so we can actually go ahead and say that this means that a n, the sequence itself, is converging to e to the 4. And that is it. Okay, so now this technique of using logarithmic properties to get something in the form of L'Hopital's rule is very handy and it comes in useful lots of times. All right, now let's move on to our next part. Letter E. All right, so the limit as x goes to infinity of 5x squared plus 1 over e to the x. Both are going to infinity, so we can apply L'Hopital's rule limit as x goes to infinity of 10x over e to the x. That does not help. So let's apply L'Hopital's rule again. It'll be 10 over e to the x, which that limit is 0. So a n goes to 0. It converges to 0. Right, next, Determine if each sequence diverges or converges. Well, because we have some continuous functions here, cosine is a continuous function, we can take the limit. If I take the limit, it goes to infinity of cosine of 3 over n squared. Applying my limit, this term goes to 0, which means this converges to cosine of 0 or 1. So a n converges to 1. The square root function is also continuous. So we can take the limit of the square root of 2n plus 1 over 3n plus 5. This limit is going to 2 thirds. So the limit, or just a n, converges to the square root of two-thirds, which is the square root of 6 over 3, if you'd like it rationalized. So it converges to the square root of 6 over 3. Okay, determine if these converge or diverge. Okay, it's important to recall the squeeze theorem. We are going to be able to use that. So cosine is stuck between negative 1 and 1. negative 1 and 1. Cosine n over n squared, so that is between negative 1 over n squared and 1 over n squared. As both of these go to 0, s converges to 0 as well. All right, the squeeze theorem is helpful when you have something that is alternating as well, because cosine goes from negative to positive, negative to positive. Well, the specific negative one-half to the n, that is bounded between 1 over 2 to the n, okay, and negative 1 over 2 to the n. In fact, it takes on those values in between, as both of these are going to 0. Our sequence in the middle, a n, converges to 0 as well. Okay, we have a new concept to add here, the idea of something being bounded. Oh, 
one more. All right, so sine is bound. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and write this as that is 2 minus sine n over n. Over n. Okay, so sine n over n, that is bounded between negative 1 over n. So this is bounded between 2 minus 1 over n. Write that whole thing in there. 2 minus sine n over n, and 2 plus 1 over n. As both of these are going to 2, that means that our sequence a n converged to 2.